All right, in this lesson, I'd like to introduce you to two more methods available on a pattern object, and they are find all and find iter. These are really helpful whenever we want to search for multiple matches within the same string. So once again, here I have my import of the regular expressions module, and I have my pattern object that is looking for the six characters of flower. And below, let's define a string and assign it to a variable called sentence. And this will be a fun sentence. It's going to be the string. There are a lot of flowers in the flowery flower field. So now this sequence of six characters of flower occurs three times here, here, and here. So below, what I want to do is invoke on my pattern object the find all method, one word, all lowercase, no underscores, and I'm going to pass in my sentence string. So what we're going to get back here is a list, but it's not going to be a list of match objects. It's going to be a list of the actual string matches. So in this case, we're simply going to get a list with three strings of flower, each pattern, each flower that it's identified for my sentence string right here in flowers, right here in flowery, and right here in flower. Okay. Now, again, you might be thinking, what's the point? I can obviously see that there are three flower uh, substrings within my sentence. And again, think more dynamically. Imagine we were searching for all occurrences of a digit within a string, right? Maybe you have three dig digits in a row. Maybe you have five digits in a row. Maybe you have just one. And a digit is a much more dynamic search pattern than the literal character's flower, right? A digit could be anything. It could be one, or it could be nine, or it could be seven, right? We're gonna see those patterns in just a few lessons, but it's important to think about the purpose here. We're gonna define a pattern that we're gonna search for within a larger string. Right now, our pattern is just something very stupid. It's the string flower, so obviously it's gonna find it three times, but hopefully that gives you a sense of what this find all method is doing. And of course, if we provide the find all method, a string that does not have the word flower anywhere inside it, like nonsense, well, then we're just going to get an empty list. The complementary method to find all is find iter. That method is actually going to return an iterable object that you can iterate over with a for loop, and it's going to yield match objects for every match. So find all is going to give you the actual string matches while find iter will give you all of the matches in actual match objects that are gonna have those methods that we talked about in the previous two lessons, like span and start and end in those. So let's go ahead and iterate over each match in pattern.finditer. And we're gonna feed a sentence again. So again, it's our pattern object. We're gonna invoke a method called find iter. We're gonna provide the string that we wanna search for the pattern within. This is going to be an iterable object that it returns that we can iterate over. And each thing that we're gonna be iterating over is going to be a match object. So I've given it the iterator variable name of match. Let's print out each match object. And we can see right here, we're going to get those three match objects. We can even see in the span attribute, we can see where it all uh, begins and ends. So 1925 will represent the first occurrence of flower right here. Then 34 to 40 in index positions will represent flowery. And then index positions 42 to 48 will represent this last flower right before field. All right. So that's all there is to cover in this lesson. We introduced two more methods on our pattern object, find all to return a list of strings with the exact matches of the pattern and find iter, which is going to give you an iterable object that you can iterate over with a for loop to yield all of the match objects holding all of the matches for that pattern in the given string.